Hello! Um, so it has been a while since I've made a physical deck profile video, um, but I have been playing this deck a lot on the simulator, um, and it is so good and also so fun that I feel compelled to just make a physical deck profile video um, because I know that this kind of video gets a lot more views than my recent DCGO videos, and I want to showcase this deck to as many people as I can. Um, so here, without further ado, is my Ukamon Rush deck um, profile video. It is Ukamon Rush, but it is also Megazoo focused. Um, so I found out that I really like Rush decks. I also really like Megazoo decks. I don't really like single stack Digivolution decks that much, but I, my playstyle is just basically to just keep swinging whenever possible. Um, the Megazoo cards help me to control board. So you go aggro on your opponent, but you're also controlling field, removing their Digimon while also being aggressive. Um, so this deck profile video is perfect for people who love this style of gameplay, where you rush your opponent down, but also have some control elements. So it is very aggressive, but also at the same time has a lot of answers for many different decks and many different situations. Um, but yeah, let's go over the deck profile video. So I'm playing five eggs, of course, I'm playing Ukamon Rush. So you kind of need five eggs. So four of a kind are these BT-14 Coromons. So the BT-14 Coromons have this inheritable, your turn, once per turn. When a card is removed from your opponent's security stack, draw one. So this inheritable, very good. Um, I wanted to add a, um, an egg that will give me more draw power. More draw powers, uh, more drawing means that I can find more answers to different board states. Um, for example, if I need to bounce something to hand, or if I need to DP minus something, DP minus something and also recover, um, or if my opponent is going wide, I, I kind of want my death axe mod. Um, so basically just drawing so you can get more of your mega um, Digimon that will answer more of your opponent's board. But yeah, this BT-14 Cormon, really good for draw power. Um, probably one of the best um, draw eggs that we have ever seen. Fifth egg is this um, EX4 Missimon. So I am playing two different colors. Um, it does not really matter because Ukamon can just go over any egg. Um, this BT14 definitely, uh, BT14 Coromon definitely the best draw egg for Ukamon just like constantly swinging your opponent. Um, but then we also have this Missimon. So it has on deletion. If you have a Digimon in play, draw one. So Ukamon, um, since Ukamon will just keep digivolving on your digi eggs and then going out and then promoting uh, and then hatching another digi egg as it promotes um, you will be very easily able to swarm the field so this missimon um, as long as you have another digimon out on deletion um, you will be able to get the draw but yeah these are the five eggs that i have decided on four bt14 cormons one EX4 Missimon um, to optimize your draws. And of course, the eponymous Ukomons. So I'm playing four of the promo Ukomon. So three costs to play, 2000 DP. Um, Digivolves for zero off of any color level two Digi Egg. Your turn, once per turn. Um, when one of your Digimon moves from the breeding area to the battle area, you may um, hatch in the breeding area, then gain one memory. So I do notice that the memory gain does surprisingly come up in this deck a lot. Um, you are able to gain so much memory in this deck. Um, I put it in this deck uh, primarily because it will let me hatch an egg after it is promoted out or any other Digimon is promoted out. Um, but surprisingly, this also adds a lot to the aggressiveness of the deck. Um, but the memory gain surprisingly does come in handy. And I will explain more as we look at more cards. 
four of the BT-16 Ukamon. Um, so this Ukamon digivolves for one off of any level two Digiag. Three costs to play, 2,000 DP. Your turn once per turn, when one of your um, Digimon moves from the breeding area to the battle area, reveal the top three cards of your deck, add one Digimon card or Tamer card among them to the hand, return the rest to the bottom of the deck. Then you may hatch in your breeding area. So again, this adds a lot more aggressiveness to the deck. Um, just simply being able to constantly hatch, promote, uh, swing, and then like you have another egg, so you can then promote next turn, bring that out and swing. Basically, your first five eggs will be able to go out and then swing very, very quickly. Um, so there is a lot of aggressive elements to the stack, and Ukamon is really the main aggressive engine that you have. So Ukamon serves as the aggressive piece. You're just constantly swinging with Ukamon, but also drawing with the inheritables under Ukamon. So you swing, you draw. You swing, you draw. Um, so this is amazing. Again, because I am playing different answers to different things, the um, reveal top three, add a Digimon or Tamer to your hand is really useful. Um, so if I need to be even more aggressive, I can grab a Louie out of my um, card reveals. So Louie will then help me to be even more aggressive, being able to digivolve onto my egg and then push it out right away. Um, or if I need to find a specific answer, um, for example, if I need a Valkyrie Mon, um, or if I need um, a Vike Mon. Um, so those cards are available to me. But yeah, I will go into more combos as I get to those cards. Um, so surprise, um, so spoiler. Um, all of my cards in this deck are four ofs, except for the Missy Mon, and a, except for a two of in the deck later. But everything is just going to be a four of, <clears throat> like when possible. So I'm playing four of these Luna Mons. Um, so really, I wanted a rookie that is able to digivolve off of red or blue. So in the event that I do not have one of these Ukumons in hand. I still can be able to just digivolve um, a rookie over my eggs. So then that way, even if I don't have Ukamon, I can still promote and attack as soon as possible. Lunamon fulfills this condition because Lunamon can digivolve off of red or blue level two. Um, so Lunamon is three costs, 1000 DP. It does have a nice effect that does come in handy sometimes. Starve your main phase by returning one of your Digimon to the hand. Gain one memory, gain two memory. Um, there are definitely some situations where I find that bouncing a Digimon to my own hand is good, especially if I am stunned. So if that Digimon is just unable to attack anyways, I can just bounce it to hand to gain two memory. Or if I just really want to um, utilize the on play of that Digimon again and all of my level five and higher Digimons have on play abilities. Um, just bouncing it to hand to utilize that effect again, surprisingly can come in handy. The next four of in the deck, Magna Angimon Ace. So I really like Ace Digimon. Um, this is probably one of my favorite Ace Digimon. So. Really, you do not have any level fours in the stack. You will only play this card from hand. On playability for four cost, 8,000 AP. Uh, if you have five or fewer security cards, recovery plus one from deck. Then for the turn, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 1,000 AP for each card in your security stack. So really, this is just a really good version of the... Um, BT, I, I don't really know which BT, um, Magna Angimon really, um, it was like in the special set, um, boosters one, two, three, um, but it, this is just a really good, uh, Magna Angimon that will recover. Usually I do not play this unless I am at five securities or less, um, so that I do get the recovery. Um, it does have overflow three, but Instead of the 7 cost Magna Angimon 6000 EP, 
I'm using the 4 cost Mega Energy Mon 8000 DP, even with Overflow 3. When this leaves field, it doesn't really bother me that much. Um, it's like I am barring the 3 memory before, so it's 4 cost instead of 7. Then when it leaves field, then I will pay the 3 um, back later happily. Um, but yeah, this will help me to recover. This will also set up for my level 6 Blast, Digivol um, Blast Digivolutions. Um, but this can also potentially get rid of my opponent's Digimon. So this is just really good. Um, especially early game, um, if you are going first or second, um, if you have this in hand, you don't really have anything else to do. Um, your opponent hasn't really set up their field yet, so you don't really want to control stuff um, with your other ace Digimon. You can just play this for four, and then at least you still get the recovery. So I find myself still playing this from hand um, early game, just so that I can have some kind of benefit from playing it. Four of the Zudamon Ace. So four cost, 8,000 DP, same as the Magna Angimon Ace. Um, on play effect, trash any two Digivolution cards from your opponent's Digimon. So it is any two sources from all of your opponent's Digimon. So if they have two different Digimon, you can pick a source from each of the two, or you can pick two from one Digimon, but you can choose any two sources from under all of their Digimon that they have. So you can pick and choose whichever two sources you want to trash, um, which is pretty nice. Then return one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards in the hand. This card has a really good synergy with two other um, Digimon in the stack. Um, but yeah, as we get to those cards, I will explain the really good synergy that this card has. Four of the EX5 Edamon. Seven cost, 7,000 DP. Um, again, you will not Digivolve off of any level four because you don't not have any level fours. Um, on play effect is just absolutely amazing. Until the end of your opponent's turn, return one of your opponent's... Oh, no. Uh, until the end of your opponent's turn, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3,000 DP and gains start of your main phase as Digimon attacks. So just being able to minus something 3,000 DP, force it to attack um, so they can then set up into your level six Ace Digimon is really nice. It does have an Inheritable, um, but realistically we'll never use this Inheritable in the deck. It is an optional Inheritable, so you don't need to uh, resolve it. And very often, like basically, I, I just never use this Inheritable. I have four of the Promo Nightmon. So it is seven cost, 7,000 DP, blocker. On play, one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3,000 EP for the turn for each of your Digimon. Again, because I am playing an Ukumon deck, and I am um, able to spam the field with many different Digimon, um, it is very easy um, to minus 12,000 EP to one of their Digimon. 12,000 EP is usually the lethal range um, for most Digimon. So... As long as they are, uh, as long as I have three Digimon on field, and then I play out Nightmon, I can then minus 12,000 12, DP to one of their Digimon. It will usually knock it out. Uh, but yeah, this is just a really nice card. This Edamon is amazing when you want to set up into an ace play, but this Nightmon is also pretty good um, in the event that you just want to knock something out. But it also has blocker on it. So if you don't necessarily want to ace, um, if your opponent has like some small rookies on field, you can even just play this by itself, get rid of something, have a blocker out. When they attack with um, a rookie or anything below 7,000 DP really, um, you can then block it. But yeah, this Nightmon is really good. I did also pick this card um, specifically because it is yellow and black. Um, which we will see will come into play. Ooh, okay. 
four copies of Defexmon. So Defexmon answers a lot of things. So if your opponent is choosing to outrush you, because obviously since you're playing a rush deck, you are just really aggressive, very fast, very early. So it's just a bunch of quick attacks in. So your opponent noticing this, they will probably try to outrush you. So then they will spam the field with their own Digimon. Def Xmon is the answer to that. So the more wide that they go, so if they flood the field with Tamers or if they flood the field with Digimon, Def Xmon will be able to answer a lot of their Digimon. Um, Zudomon Ace will help you to synergize with Def Xmon. So because you can trash any two sources from your opponent's Digimon, you can trash just enough sources so then when you D Digivolve with um, Def Xmon, then you can then delete their level four and lower. So the effect of Def Xmon, so it's 20 cost, 15,000 DP. Um, when you would play this card, reduce its memory cost by three for each Digimon and Tamer your opponent has in play. On play, D Digivolve one all of your opponent's Digimon, then delete all of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon. End of opponent's turn, once returned, delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the lowest play cost. So basically, if your opponent has, for example, a level 7 Digimon out, you can then play Zudwan Ace for 4, which is why having an extra memory to go from 3 to 4 is pretty useful. Um, so this Ukumon will gain you a memory to go to 4. This Zudwan can then be played while keeping turn. Um, so you can trash out the level 6 and level 5 from that opponent's level 7 Digimon. And then... You play Def Xmon, D Digivolve their level 7 by 1, so then they are now the level 4, and then delete their level 4 and lower Digimon. Or if your opponent has two level 6s out, you can do something similar play Zudwan Ace, get rid of the level 5 from both level 6s, and then Def Xmon to then D Digivolve their level 6s into level 4s, and then delete them. Um, but yeah, this card, really, really amazing. Um, this is a really great synergy. Zudamon Ace, I did not mention before, but if your opponent has some Digimon out with Partition, um, you can very easily Zudamon Ace, um, and then if they have two Partition Digimon out, remove a level 4 from one, remove a level 4 from the other. Now they don't have enough sources, so then those Digimon cannot Partition. Um, or if they have some Inheritables that you just want to get rid of, Zudamon Ace will very easily get rid of those Inheritables. Time for the Ace Digimon. Vikemon Ace. So, Vikemon Ace, 7 play cost, 12,000 DP. Um, on play, when Digivolving. And it can counter from Zudamon, Edamon, or Nightmon. So, on play, when Digivolving, D Digivolve 2, one of your opponent's Digimon. Then, none of their Digimon of one or fewer Digivolution cards can suspend until the end of their turn. When attacking, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with one or fewer Digivolution cards. So this has amazing synergy uh, with Zudamon Ace, Edamon, um, and also Defexmon, surprisingly. So, for example, if your opponent has some kind of level 6, maybe it's like a an Ace Digimon. You can then play Vikemon for 7, D Digivolve their level 6 ace um, by 2, so then they get Overflow 4. Um, you still retain turn because you because your opponent technically lost a 4 memory. And then you can then Def Xmon to delete their now level 4 lower Digimon. Or, for example, if you combo with Zudamon first, so you remove the sources. Um, so for example, you remove a level three and a level four from sources, and then you play out Vikemon Ace. Then you D Digivolve their level six by two. So then it goes back down to the level two. It will then be sourced by, uh, it will then be um, trashed by game mechanics because a level two cannot exist in the battle area with zero DP. So that is just a really nice way to 
remove something without actually deleting it. So Zudamon Ace, get rid of two sources, any sources really. And then Vikemon Ace will then get rid of the other two sources and then trash the level two because it can't exist in the battle area. So that is a nice synergy. On your turn, Vikemon Ace can also Digivolve for three off of a Zudamon. So if you don't have four memory or if you just want um, a cheaper Digivolving, um, then you can just go off of Zudamon for three into Vikemon. Um, having already stripped sources from your Digimon, from your opponent's Digimon before, de-Digivolving their Digimon when you Digivolve into this, you can very easily get that one attacking to, le to delete one of their Digimon with one or fewer sources. But yeah, this is really nice. I also find myself just hard playing this Digimon from hand. It is a similar effect to Sorai, but in my opinion, better. Um, so, um, it has that effect where when you play it from hand, D Digivolve to one of their Digimon, but also all of their Digimon with one or fewer sources can't suspend until the end of their turn. So, for example, if your opponent has basically anything, like if they're playing Roll Knights, they can't suspend their Royal Knights, so they can't attack you for lethal. Um, or if they are also playing some kind of Ukumon deck, Ukumon can't really digivolve into anything, so it will only have one source under it at most. So if you then play out Vikemon, um, you know that their their Ukumon can't suspend to rush you down for game, for example. But Vikemon, really strong. Similar Sorai effects, but this effect is just better than Sorai. Sorai prevents um, Digimon with no sources from attacking. Um, I, I'm not sure about blocking, but Vikemon Ace prevents Digimon with one or fewer sources from attacking or blocking. So they need two sources in order to attack or block versus Sorai needing any source. And then... I have four copies of Valkyrie Mon Ace. So Valkyrie Mon Ace, really good for the deck. Um, it is a really nice counter against Numemon. Um, so it has that effect when you play it from hand um, for 7, 12,000 DP. So on play, um, minus 5,000 DP to your opponent's Digimon for the rest of the turn. So if it's um, played on your turn, just a neg 5,000 DP to their board. Um, you can also Blast Digivolve it from your Magna Angemon Ace or any of these two yellow black level fives. Um, so <clears throat> um, what I find is nice, if your opponent has a um, Digimon out even 15, 16,000 DP, so if you Edamon minus 3,000 DP to their Digimon and then force it to attack and then you blast Digivolve into Valkyrie Mon Ace, um, you then minus 5,000 DP to their um, Digimon for the turn. So that 16,000 is now 13 because of Edamon, then it is now 8,000 because of Valkyrie Mon Ace. They attack, a security card's removed, so then Valkyrie Mon Ace will then be able to delete the now 8,000 DP Digimon. Or even if they just start at 8,000, for example, a BT-16 Pyeldramon. So if it's 8,000 and then you play out this Edamon, give it minus 3,000 until the end of your opponent's turn. So it's 5,000 now. They attack, you blast into Valkyriemon Ace, uh, minus 5,000 DP to their board for the turn. That Pyeldramon will now be zero. It will then be deleted. And even if it had partition, um, they can play out their level fours from sources, but then this Valkyrie Mon Ace effect is still active, and then those level fours will then be um, zero DP. So this is like my Pyeldramon counter as well. Um, if they attack, you can just blast into this, get rid of their Pyeldramon. They partition, uh, those Digimon get uh, minus 5,000 DP. They'll, they also get deleted. So this is just a nice workaround against partition, which is also nice. So this is like the Numemon and um, Partition deck counter, as well as technically also Rookie Rush counter. So if my opponent is swarming the field of Ukamon, I can I can again just play this from hand on my turn to just wipe their board, 
or play out one of these three level fives, and then when they attack, um, get rid of their um, Digimon. Also, this all turns effect once per turn is amazing. Um, so all turns once per turn, my card is removed from a security um, stack. Delete one of your opponent's 8,000 DP or lower Digimon. So from your security stack or your opponent's security stack, this um, effect will trigger. So if they have 8,000 DP or lower, then you have to delete it with this effect. Um, if this effect didn't delete, this Digimon gains security attack plus one until the end of your turn. So suppose that your opponent actually, um, let's say a, um, a security card is removed, but your opponent actually doesn't have an 8,000 DP or less Digimon in play for you to delete. For example, if they attack security with a 9,000 DP or more Digimon, this effect will trigger um, they have no 8,000 or less DP Digimon, so you don't delay anything, but you have security attack plus one until the end of your turn. So you can even gain security attack plus one after your opponent um, checks your security on their turn. And the next turn, you attack. Um, if there's nothing else to delete, you gain another security attack plus one. So this can go for three security attacks, um, which is pretty nice. So this is a really good control element card but also is also very hyper aggressive. Um, you can very easily get security attack plus one, but sometimes you might even get security attack plus two. Four copies of Azu Longmont Ace from EX5. So seven costs 12,000 DP, Blast Digivolve off of all of your level fives. Um, so yellow, blue, yellow, yellow. So as Longmon is perfect as that extra third um, ace Digimon in case you want to blast Digivolve off of something. So on play when Digivolving, return one of your opponent's level five or lower Digimon to the hand, then unsuspend one of your Digimon with the Deva for Great Dragons or for Sovereign's trait. On deletion, delete one of your opponent's Digimon at the highest level. So um, admittedly, as Longmon ace, isn't as impactful as Vikemon Ace or Valkyriemon Ace. So Vikemon Ace can very easily uh, get rid of big threats by de-digivolving them. And also stunning board and then when attacking, removing a Digimon with one or fewer sources. Valkyriemon Ace is really good at control and aggression. So you can just usually board wipe your opponent's field if they're going wide. Or you can combo with Edamon um, to just get rid of stuff very easily. Or even if they are only 13,000 DP, they don't have that m minus 3,000 from Edamon. But you have any of your yellow level 5s to Digivolve off of. So you can then minus 5,000 to their 13,000 DP Digimon. It's now 8,000 DP. They attack into security and then you delete it with Valkyrie Mon Ace. Um, so that is just really good otherwise when you attack security nothing to delete this is usually two security checks um, as long mon ace isn't really as impactful but sometimes if my opponent does have like a little five on field i can just feel comfortable hard playing this for seven balancing that level five to hand on deletion effect um, if this is deleted delete one of your opponent's digimon at the highest level so for example if my uh, one of my level fives is suspended because I am trying to rush my opponent down. So for example, actually anything really. So this can go off of any of my level fives. Let's say this Edamon is suspended. Opponent sees this Edamon. Cool, they're going to attack into it. And then I blast into Azalongmon Ace. So even if they are more than 12,000 DP, one Azalongmon Ace is deleted, I will then delete their Digimon at the highest level. So I do lose four memory but that four memory was used to get rid of their Digimon. So it seems like a good trade-off. If they have a level five or lower on field at the same time that they swing into um, one of my suspended Digimon, I get to bounce that level five or lower and then crash with Azalongmon. Uh, um, Azalongmon will be delayed, but then I get to the, their Digimon. Um, but yeah, Azalongmon Ace is definitely the least impactful of my Ace Digimon. And then I have six tamers, four of, and then two of. 
or no, two of and then four of. So the two of Hiro Manakawa from BT8. So definitely Hiro Manakawa, I just want a memory setter. But what memory setter would really benefit would really benefit this deck the most? Um, Hiro Manakawa, when you're level five or higher Digimon attacks, you can spend Hiro Manakawa to give one of your Digimon plus 2k for the turn. So for example, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 32 level 5 or higher Digimon. So when they attack, I can then buff them up 2000 EP. Or if I wanted to, I can attack with them and then buff up my rookies, uh, one of my rookies by 2000 EP. I find a really strong synergy with Hero Monokawa and Valkyrie Mon Ace. So for example, you swing. You suspend Hiro Monokawa, plus 2k on Valkyrie Mon Ace, so it's now 14,000 DP. Check security, 13,000 DP Digimon, no problem. Security attack plus 1, check security again, ooh, 13,000 DP Digimon, no problem. So um, just being able to give your Ace Digimon more livability is just really big. Overflow will hurt you, um, but if you can minimize the chances of you getting uh, a losing security battle then just being able to give that dp buff seems really good for the deck even on your level fives for example magna angemon only 8000 zudamon ace only 8000 um, if you then buff them up with hero monokawa they can be 10,000 if they check another level five security that's 8000 they will live so you won't get the overflow minus three. Even on Edamon and Nightmon, if you have the need to, buff them up by 2,000. They can also survive most level fives from security. So just having the heroes to give more DP to your Digimon is very nice. So suppose your opponent does have a suspended Digimon out. Um, for example, let's say Tyrant Kabuterimon. Um... Let's say you have this Death Axemon, 15,000 DP. Their Tyrant is 16,000 DP. You can suspend Hero Monokawa, give this 17,000 DP. Um, when it is attacking, and then swing over your opponent's Tyrant, Kabuterimon, that way. Or, you know, just being able to overpower your opponent's Digimon if they are suspended. Or just having safer ch security checks. Hero Monokawa is my memory setter of choice for this deck. Initially, this used to be... Um, Louie from BT16 because I only ran two Louis to go into Big Ukamon, but I I found that I didn't really need Big Ukamon in this deck that much. So then I replaced Louie with Hiro Monokawa just for more aggressiveness. And of course, four copies of Promo Louie Iwata. Three cost, but really a two cost tamer. Um, on play, you may move one of your level 3 or higher Digimon from the breeding area to the battle area. Your turn, when one of your Digimon moves from the breeding area to the battle area, you, by suspending this tamer, gain one memory. So, Louis costs 3, uh, but immediately you can move a Digimon out from breeding, suspend Louis, gain one back, so effectively, 2 cost tamer, and that Digimon that came out of breeding can attack right away. So this is basically the hybrid for game in this deck, which does not run um, hybrids. You are running 12 rookies. You are constantly hatching eggs, digivolving on those eggs, and then pushing them out. And then when you push them out, you can hatch more eggs. So Louis Iwata will really add to the aggressiveness of this deck. It is very, very surprising how aggressive the rookies can actually be. Granted, you're only running 12 of them, but because um, of this Searcher Ukamon, getting those rookies consistently is, you know, pretty easy. Um, in addition to the constant digivolution off your eggs turn after turn, uh, and then the drawing from the eggs, so Koromon BT14 and Missimon EX4, um, you also get the search off of the BT16 Ukamon, so very consistent. Uh, that you will get the rookies that you need. But yeah, you can very easily hybrid, quote-unquote hybrid for game with Louie. 
just by having a rookie in raising playing Louis for effectively two costs, pushing it out, and then swinging for game. So yeah, this is just really amazing. So yeah, let's go over quickly the combos of this deck again. Or maybe not combos, but what the cards are for. There's no real place for me to put these Louis right now. Um, so I'll just kind of plop them here. So four BT14 Coromons for draw power, one Missy Mon um, EX4 for draw power, four Promo Ukamons for the extra memory gain while also hatching an egg, um, four BT16 Ukamons um, for hatching an egg and also card search, four of the Lunamons for um, digivolving off of those eggs. It is also useful for bouncing Digimon to hand. Um, for example, if they are suspended, uh, they can just pretty much easily, or like not suspended, but like if they're stunned by your opponent's effects. For example, if you're, you have an Ukamon out that surprisingly lived, then your opponent then stuns your Ukamon. Uh, and you're just like, oh yeah, let's promote this Lunamon out. This Ukamon can't really swing. Bounce that Ukamon back to your hand. This Lunamon, sorry I said Lunamon, um, but this Lunamon will then be able to bounce one of your stunned Digimon to hand because you can't really attack with it. Or even bouncing a Def Xmon to hand, surprisingly, I have found to be effective in some situations. For example, let's say you played Def Xmon out on a previous turn, and then your opponent sets up again, and you're just like, well, I could have this Def Xmon as an extra attacker, or I can use Lunamon to bounce Def Xmon to hand, gain two memory, then play Def Xmon out again for that really strong on play effect. Uh, but yeah, Lunamon surprisingly does come up sometimes, but really Lunamon is only here to act as the rookie to go off of these red or blue eggs. Um, but that start of main effect is sometimes useful. For Magna Angimons, um, for recovery, but also potentially getting rid of um, an opponent's Digimon. For Zoomalon Aces, <clears throat> for source removal, Potentially also bouncing a sourceless Digimon to hand. Four of these EX5 Edamons to taunt my opponent's Digimon. Um, force them to attack start main phase. And then uh, minus 3000 DP until the end of their turn. Which will then set up into any of my level 6 Ace Digimon. Four of these Nightmons. It has blocker on it. But also because I'm swarming field pretty easily. I can then also remove their Digimon pretty easily with DP reduction. Um, this also goes into any of my Ace Digimon, level 6 Ace Digimon pretty easily. Four Def Xmons, in case my opponent goes wide. Um, four Vikmon Ace, um, to stun my opponent's um, Digimon with one or fewer sources, but also um, to de digivolve something in case it comes up. So if I am blasting into Vikmon Ace, they're attacking with a Digimon with a lot of DP. I can then Vikmon Ace, D Digivolve 2. They will most likely lose in security battle because 32 of my Digimon have 7,000 DP or more. Um, Valkyrie Mon Ace, um, just really good at removing uh, 5,000 DP or less Digimon, but also the effect all turns to gain security attack plus one or delete 8,000 DP or less Digimon from your opponent's field. Is also really nice. Um, this one attacking a Vikmon is also very nice too. As the Longmon is more replaceable, um, I do have some something in mind to replace as the Longmon Ace with, but it is potentially good at just removing a level five or lower, and then also deleting one of your opponent's um, highest level Digimon when this itself is delayed. Two Hero Monokawas for DP buff for Louis for an extra uh, um, aggressive. Um, finish or even just aggressive gameplay overall so what cards do I really see myself replacing so as the Longmon Ace definitely the most replaceable Ace Digimon in the deck actually since these are all four ofs I'm just going to consolidate them to save space so they can all fit on screen So basically, everything in this deck is 4 of, except for 
one Missy Mon and the two Hero Monokawas. So I will just consolidate them so I can fit everything on screen. Okay, so again, everything is a four of, except for the one Missimon and the two Hero Monokawas, but basically four of, four of, four of, four of, four of, four of, everything really is a four of. Um, so if I were to replace Azulongmon Ace with something, um, one of Surprisingly, one of the benefits for this deck is that there's no t um, options in it. So you can search for all of your Digimon or Tamers using BT16 Ukamon. But let's say that you did um, want an option. If you wanted to run an option card, um, I would recommend potentially adding in Heaven's Judgment um, from EX4. Or adding an X program from BT9. So Heaven's Judgment, you do have 1, 2, 3, 4, 16 yellow Digimon um, with which you can fulfill the, um, the color requirements for Heaven's Judgment, um, provided that you take out Azalongmon Ace. So instead of 20 source, yellow sources, it will then only be 16. So if you do run Heaven's Judgment in lieu of Azalongmon Ace, it does, uh, you do reliably meet the color requirements to use it. Or if you want to run X program instead, because you do have Ukabons pretty consistently as well as Louie on field pretty consistently. So although you only have 12 white sources, Louie, once Louie is on field, um, you can basically use X program when you want, or even just having Ukamon on field or in raising. X program can board wipe your opponent's Digimon, provided that they don't have X antibody and traits. But yeah, um, there are some moments where I'm just like, oh, cool, maybe I should run option cards. I don't really find the need to run option cards. These Mega Digimon are basically the option effects that I need. So Vikemon Ace is basically a Sorai from hand but it's a better Sorai from hand. Um, Valkyriemon is very similar to Crimson Blaze. Um, of course, they aren't exactly Sorai and Crimson Blaze. They are different in some aspects, uh, but you know their effects are probably the closest Digimon effects to Sorai and to Crimson Blaze. But yeah, these are really strong. Defexmon is basically... Um, a board wipe in a card together. So Def Xmon fills the niche for X Program or Heaven's Judgment, so you don't really need to run those. But because Azulongmon Ace is the most um, how, um, replaceable card, um, I if you wanted to run an option instead of Azulongmon Ace, I could definitely see that. So there are arguably better Ace Digimon out there. I am running as Longmon Ace because it does have an on-play effect. So even if I don't um, Digivolve off of level 5, I can still play this for 7 and then use the on-play effect. If you haven't noticed, all of the Ace Digimon in this deck have on-plays. Specifically, all of the level 5 and up Digimon in this deck have on-plays. So even if I don't Digivolve into them, I still get to use their effect. Um, this is why I chose Azulongmon Ace instead of something like a Mega Gargamon Ace. Because it, while it is a good card, it does not have an on-play effect. And Azulongmon Ace can Digivolve off of any of my level 5 Digimon. Um, Black Gargam no, Mega Gargamon Ace can only Digivolve off of really 
two of my Digimon. So eight copies. But as I'm on Ace, I just want a, a third Ace to use. A third level six Ace to use. Um, that can Digimon from as many um, different Digimon as possible. But yeah, I find that this deck is really good currently how it is. Um, I don't find the need to run options. Um, if your opponent attacks into security, chances are very likely that they will lose in security battle. So you have a 15,000 DP, you have 12, um, 12,000 DP Digimon. So realistically, you have 16 cards in there that are uh, in your deck that are 12,000 DP or more. So chances are very, very likely that even if you don't run option cards, they attack into security, um, their Digimon will probably lose security battle. So I don't really find the need to run option cards. If you also wanted to be even more aggressive, um, I would also consider Blitz Omnimon from BT5. So once you have the Vikemon Ace or Valkyriemon Ace, you attack with them. Uh, they're suspended, but they're both blue. They're blue or red. So you can also Blitz Omni off of them for game if you want to. I find that Louie for game is often sufficient, but um, if you wanted to run Blitz Omni as an extra uh, attack, um, you can instead of the Azalongmon Ace. Um, because of the searching effects from the BT-16 Ukamon, uh, Blitz Omni seems like a good choice if you want to tech something in. But also it does have a slight synergy with Valkyrie Mon Ace. So you attack, security attack plus one for the turn. And then even if you aren't going for game, you then Blitz Omni, unsuspend, swing two attacks because it gained that security attack plus one until the end of your turn. So it does have some neat um, synergies with Fikemon Ace and Valkyrie Mon Ace. So improvements for this deck in the future. So, of course, um, if you have been keeping up with Megazoo List, or if you've seen this new Shoto Kazama from, I believe, EX7, it is a three cost tamer. Start of your turn, if, you have a, uh, if your opponent has a Digimon, gain one memory. End of your turn, you get to give one of your Digimon Blocker and Piercing. Or I should say that's mandatory that you give one of your Digimon Blocker and Piercing. Um, it also has a different effect, but that is not relevant for this deck. But, for example, you have so many turns where you're just playing out a Def X Bond or a Vikemon Ace or any of your level fives or higher, really. So sometimes you're just passing turn with an unsuspended level five or higher Digimon. That Shota Kazama will be very good because you can then give your Digimon... Um, blocker. So for example, if you have a Shokazama on the field, it will constantly give you one memory so long as your opponent has a Digimon out. Start of your turn. Def Xmon, you play Def Xmon. Even if it passes memory to your opponent, end of your turn, Shokazama will give um, Def Xmon blocker and piercing. So it's now a 15,000 DP blocker. So your opponent will have a lot of difficulty removing um, or like at your other suspended Digimon or even attacking security. Or for example, if you want to give Vikemon Ace Blocker or Valkyriemon Ace Blocker, provided that you just hard play them from hand, you end up passing turn. Well, they are 12,000 DP blockers. So your opponent will also have a really tricky time um, getting chipping in your security. But yeah, I would replace Azulongmon Ace with Shoto Kazama for sure, um, once Shoto Kazama comes out. And when Shoto Kazama does come out, I would then proceed to replace Nightmon Ace with the Rapid Mons from Star Deck 17. So um, on play for 7 costs, um, I believe 7,000 DP, but it could be 8,000. Uh, but for 7 costs, if you have, um, so, DT Evolve 1, 
one of your opponent's Digimon, then one you have a green Tamarind playing, such as the Shoto Kazama. This Digimon can't be deleted um, by opponent's effects, I believe, and it can't be bounced to hand or deck. Um, so yeah, that uh, Rapidmon is just really good synergy with the Shoto Kazama. Um, unfortunately, you cannot Digivolve into Valkyriemon Ace, but you can Digivolve into Vikemon Ace if I do take out Nightmon at the time then I would probably run Mega Gargamon Ace in this deck, seeing as how um, that Rapidmon seems really good synergy-wise with Shota Kazama. But yeah, currently this deck is good as is. I did consider run it, um, running some EX6 um, Raiji Ludomon, the level 5 Black um, Legend Arms Digimon, that you can place under one of your level 5 Digimon to force your opponent's Digimon to attack you start of their main phase. Um, so for example, if I have an Edamon on field that has not Digivolved yet, or I have a Nightmon on field that has not Digivolved yet, or even Magna Angelmon Ace or Zudamon Ace, um, I can then tuck the Raichi Ludamon from, un from my hand under one of these Digimon, I believe for 2 cost. Or it could be three cost. I think two. But force an opponent's Digimon to attack. This will then set up a blast Digivolving. And then inheritable effect when this Digimon would be removed from the field, I believe. Or deleted. Like it has some kind of protection effect. And just get rid of that source to prevent that um, removal. So it's good at being able to set up a blast Digivolving. But it's also good because it will give your Digimon one-time protection. So, for example, if you go into Vikemon Ace or Valkyrie Mon Ace, you can then remove it when these two, when it would leave field. So then you still get um, protected and you don't lose the memory due to overflow. So it is really good. However, um, I don't really think that is necessary for the deck. That sounds really amazing. You could replace Azalongmon Ace with the Raiji Ludamon if you want to. But currently I find that if I'm playing Nightmon out, I will most often pass turn. Same thing for the Edamon. Granted, Edamon doesn't really need to stick Raiji Ludamon under itself unless it's the turn after. Zudamon Ace, Magna Angelmon Ace probably could benefit from the Raiji Ludamon. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to replace as long on Ace with something, I would recommend Heaven's Judgment, X Program, Raiji Ludamon from EX6, or Blitz Omni from BT5. In the future, um, replace it with Shota Kazama. Um, possibly replace Nightmon, uh, which is the second most expendable card in the deck. So you can um, replace Nightmon with um, the Star Deck 17 Green Black Rapidmon. But yeah, I'm going to talk about some of my games. So this deck is just basically an auto win against Paeldramon. Uh, technically Imperial, but Imperial lists are running that um, BT16 Paeldramon. <clears throat> Even if it's a different Paeldramon, they can't really do much about this deck. So let's say you play out a Magna Angemon Ace, or a Zudamon Ace, or an Edamon, or a Nightmon. They, their removal effects, aside from Mega Death and Giga Death, and until they go into their level 6s, don't really affect your level 5s. So if they go into the BT-16 Pildramon, they do su suspend your Digimon, which is okay, uh, but that's okay because you can still blast Digivolve onto your level fives. So for example, I have a Nightmon out. My opponent then suspends my Nightmon by going into BT16 by Ultramon. I can't unsuspend um, during my next turn, but I can still blast. So if they attack um, security, Nightmon will then blast Digivolve into Valkyriemon Ace, Vikemon Ace, 
Eyes Along Money does not really help me here because they will then partition. So if I go into Valkyrie Money's, they attack minus 5,000, so it's 3,000 attacking into security. It probably does have jamming. But because the security card is removed, um, delete their Pyeldramon because it's 8,000 DP or lower. They partition. Those that you want to get deleted because they are now 0 DP due to the minus 5,000 DP. Um, or if they attack and then it is a Pyeldramon, that means that blue level 4 is right under Pyeldramon. So then when they attack with Pyeldramon, Digivolve into Vikemon, Digivolve 2, so get rid of the Paeldramon, get rid of the um, XVmon. So it is now possibly a rookie attacking, or it could be a Stingmon attacking, depending on if they digivolved into the XVmon, or if they just played out the XVmon. But either way, that Digimon no longer has jamming, so then when it um, goes into security battle, it will most likely be deleted as is either 1,000 DP, 2,000 DP, or 4,000 DP realistically. Um, but yeah, this is just really nice against uh, Imperial Dramon. This deck is basically auto-win against Imperial Dramon. They can keep playing out Warmons and Vmons, but because you have so much searching for the Valkyriemon Ace, you can then even hard play this on your turn, get rid of their field, or you can, you know, just realistically play out Edamon, Natemon, or Magna Angimon and then as soon as they attack you can go into Valkyriemon Ace and then Valkyriemon Ace just wrecks Imperial Dramon. Um so should they go into level 6 uh, Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode or Finder Mode you can always Def Hexmon or you can always Zudamon or you can Valkyrie Vikemon Ace to get rid of sources or de digivolve it or whatever you need to but there are several interactions in which you can handle their level six digimon um so really valkyrie mon ace will handle their level four and lower digimon um, immediately if you blast digivolve into this thing it can also get rid of level six digimon however like Vike mon ace zudamon ace def mon um, will more easily get rid of their level 6 Digimon, provided that you don't Digivolve into um, Valkyrie Mon Ace, because this can also get rid of level 6 Digimon. But these are the cards they can play to maneuver around their level 6s. But yeah, Imperial Dramon, this deck is basically a free win. Um, this deck is also really good against Numemon. Numemon has the Ukumons which basically only have one source or fewer. They, um, so if you then Vikemon Ace, you just stun a large majority of their board. Um, they also play Digimon out by effects, or they hard play Numemon. Um, so if they don't Digivolve twice, so they need to acquire two sources, so basically they need to Digivolve twice. If they don't do that, then they just can't swing at you. Um, or, if you Valkyrie Mon Ace, you can just board wipe their Digimon pretty easily. Def Mon, of course, will also board wipe their Digimon easily because they're trying to go big. Um, but yeah, this deck also counters Numemon. I have not had much experience playing this deck against Magnemon, really. Uh, people are playing Magnemon X less on the simulator, understandably, because people are getting tired of the deck. But I, in the times I have played against Magnemon, I have done pretty well. Um, I just don't have enough history playing against Magnemon X to really say. But this deck is really good against Numemon and really good against Imperial Dramon specifically. Also really good against any deck that is going wide or single stack. So it's like, oh cool, single stack, Vikemon Ace, Zudamon Ace will very easily get rid of them. Um, or you can Edamon set up into Valkyrie on Ace to get rid of single stacks pretty easily. Um, going wide, Vikemon Ace will stun their um, Digimon with one or fewer sources. Defexmon will punish them. Valkyrie on Ace will then board wipe them. Um, but yeah, there are so many different 
things they can answer with this deck. And also, this deck is just so simple to use. You just digivolve to rookies, push out rookies, attack with rookie, draw a card, digivolve to another rookie, um, push them out with Louie, attack, draw a card, um, play out your level fives and higher for their on plays. But yeah, this, this deck is like really simple to use. Um, it is kind of Mega Zoo, kind of Rookie Rush together in the same deck. But yeah, it answers so many different things. Um, I, I, I'm kind of blanking out on my matchups with this deck. But I'm going to talk about what decks I faced at Locals um, this past tournament that I used this deck for the first time um, in person. I have used this deck extensively on the simulator. I have played many, many hours of gameplay with this deck. But yeah, I remember on Thursday's tournament when I went last week, first deck I faced was Numemon. Uh, again, just like Numemon and Imperial Dramon, this deck is very, very good against them. Um, so against Numemon, my opponent is trying to go wide, so I can just Valkyrie Mon Ace, board wipe them. Um, if they go into Monzaimon, um, play out Edamon, force it to attack. They attack, then proceed to board wipe them with Valkyrie Mon Ace. <clears throat> Usually most of their the time, um, their hand will have Ukamons, Chikurimons, Numemons, all of which will immediately die um, when they play it from hand after the Valkyrie Mon Ace effect. So my opponent just ended up passing turn a lot. Um, or if they do establish some Ukamons or some Digimon out, again, I would Vikemon Ace to stop them from being able to swing up with them. There is a time where I, I believe I had like three Louis out, three Digimon out. My opponent attempted to play Defexmon out, but they had the Chikurimon, their own Chikurimon, so they could not Defexmon me. And because I had played Vikemon Ace turn prior, their Chikurimon was not able to attack. So it was just like a sitting Chikurimon on field. Um, so Vikemon Ace. Turn after that, I played out another Vikemon Ace. They just could not get rid of the Chikurimon. And in such, they could not play their own Defexmon. Granted, um, this deck does not really get punished by Defexmon. So aside from your rookies... <clears throat> so aside from your rookies... So you have the Lunamons, the Ukamons. So these are the only cards that will be deleted when your opponent plays Def Mon out. So even if you are going wide, your other Digimon are, lo are level 5 and higher. There are no level 4s in the stack. So your opponent cannot delete your level 5 and up Digimon with Def Mon. Um, it could come into playing that, for example, you have a Nightmon. You have a Valkyrie Mon Ace, they Def X Mon you. You do lose four memory because Valkyrie Mon Ace will leave um, field. But then that's okay because you still have this Knight Mon that can then attack turn after or after they just de digolved you. You can then blast again immediately. But yeah, it does give them some memory gain. But they're just easily many answers to your opponent's Death Xmon. For example, if you use you go into Vikemon Ace <clears throat> and then you attack, you can easily get rid of their Death Xmon, which is sourceless. Or if you have the turn, um, you can then wait for your opponent to attack with Death Xmon. Um, minus 5,000 DP, so it's 10,000 DP. Maybe it'll die in security. Maybe not. But like, this actually, this is not really an answer to Def Mon. As long Mon Ace surprisingly is an answer to Def Mon because of the undeletion effect on it. Or you can just very easily Zuda Mon Ace your opponent's Def Mon. So you can just strip any two sources from their Digimon and then bounce their sourceless Def Mon to hand. But yeah, this deck does have a lot of answers for new Mimon. Second game, the tournament, I played against Imperial Tremont, which is also, as previously stated, a free win for this deck. 
So you are just so easily able to strip their sources. You can rush them down. You can board wipe them with Falcarim on Ace. This will absolutely wreck their turn. Um, if they go wide with their many um, Davis and Ken Tamers, you can then punish them with Def Mon. So Davis and Ken start main phase will play out a Wormon or Vmon. So they have the Tamer, they play out a Wormon or Vmon. They have another Tamer, they play out another one. They are Swarming the field, granted it is a temporary swarm, those Digimon will go back to hand, um, start, end of your turn. But before that comes, you just play Def Xmon, take advantage of them having May Digimon and Tamers out, um, so that is just some pretty nice synergy. But yeah, I absolutely love Def Xmon. There is a really, really great amount of joy that I feel when my opponent is going wide. And I'm just like playing two cost FX Mon or zero cost FX Mon, even five cost FX Mon. So it's like, oh, cool, this is like the answer to so many things. Um, my third round, let me think about this. I was playing against Tyrant Kabuterimon. And again, I was very easily, I was able to beat the deck really easily. Um, so Tyrant takes some time to go into. And because of the aggressiveness of Ukamon and Lunamon and Luiawada, you can very easily get a bunch of damage in, draw a bunch of cards, um, and then by the time their opponent does establish Tyrant Kabuterimon, there are several things that you can do. So, for example, my opponent had played out a Tyrant Kabuterimon, um, and then the... Um, even if they... So Tyrant Kabuterimon is unaffected by your Digimon effects while it is suspended. You can um, play out Edamon targeting one of their other Digimon. So when you target their other Digimon, for example, the Digimon that they play off of Tyrant Kabuterimon, that Digimon will be minus 3000 DP and will be forced to attack. And then you can very easily blast Digivolve into Vikemon Ace, D Digivolve their Tyrant Kabuterimon by two. Um, so then that is no longer a threat to you. And they can work your way around that should it come to that point. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> or, yeah, you can mix and match what you do with this deck pretty easily. So we'll answer a bunch of different board states. But my win against Tyrant Kabuterimon was also easy for me because they take a while to set up and I'm just like rookie rushing them as they set up. And then by the time that they do establish a level six on board, they attack. I blast Digivolve into something, maybe Valkyrie Mon Ace, maybe Vike Mon Ace. But I'm just really easily, uh, I'm just really easily able to control their board while also getting attacks into their security. Um, next turn, they want to attack my suspended <clears throat> Ace Digimon, of course. But I I have already set up like a level 5 the turn prior. I can blast Digivolve into another Ace Digimon again. So there's not much that they can do. Uh, fourth game in the Locals was the game that I lost. So I went 3-1 for Locals. Ended up getting second place. Um, but I played against Hunters, and Hunters was actually really strong against my deck. Like, they would go into Arrestor Dramon Superior Mode, and then, for example, even if I had two Dapex Mons, because I was able to get around them having so many Tamers and Digimon, they would tuck one of my Dapex Mons under my Dapex Mon, or they would... Uh, or my Ukamon, which had lived the turn prior because I had hit into a Hunter, um, they would tuck my Def Xmon under my Ukamon and then swing into the Ukamon. Um, so then they would get rid of the Def Xmon that way. Or even if I had some Ace Digimon out, the Ukamon would be alive. They would tuck, like for example, Zudwan Ace under Ukamon, swing into it, I would lose three memory. Um, so 
there were some shenanigans that they would do um, when I was playing them that was actually really, really hard for me to overcome just because they would tuck my Ace Digimon under stuff or they would tuck my Def Xmon under stuff. Um, and then they would get so many surprise attacks out of nowhere um, just because they can gain so much memory uh, and reduce Digivolution cost by so much. But yeah, that matchup was actually pretty hard for me. And I think I made a misplay before because I had not realized that they had all four superior modes in trash. So I did not play around the fact that they had four in trash. I thought that they may have had one in hand. Um, so I made an inoptimal play. But like even then, the deck is just really hard to play against. Um, they can tuck your Ace Digimon under your Ukamons, which will likely be alive because it probably hints a tamer. They can then use their Clockmakers to give their Superior Mode a Security Attack plus one, so they can swing for a check, two checks really with jamming, and then end of turn swing for two more checks of jamming, so they can go really hyper aggressive out of nowhere. They can control your board really easily too. But I think that <clears throat> out of all the games I have played on the simulator and even the games in real per in real life, that was the hardest matchup I have ever played. Um, I can get around Omnimon Megazoo pretty easily. I can get around basically any other deck with relative ease. It was just that the Hunter's deck was just really hard because... I just really couldn't do anything. But yeah, thank you for watching this deck profile video. Um, I realized that I formatted it way differently than my other deck profile videos. Like before, I would space out my cards pretty easily. Um, I do not have my other camera stand with me at the moment. So I'm using a different camera stand, kind of trying out a different um, setup. But yeah. Thank you for watching this video. This deck is really strong, absolutely really fun to play, really easy to use. Um, yeah, everything is basically four of, except for the two heroes and that one Missimon. So consistency is really high. As the Longmon Ace is there for when you need it, um, you could replace it with any of the aforementioned four cards. So Heaven's Judgment, X Program, Blitz Omnimon, or I'm blanking on the fourth one. But, you know, if you want to replace it with something, you could. I'm just playing as Longmon Ace uh, because it is a flex bot, so you don't really need to replace it with anything. Um, it is the most replaceable, but again, it is still good in the deck against certain matchups. But yeah, this stack I absolutely love it is really consistent, really aggressive, really controlling, um, really fun to play for me. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you all next time.